in the workshop and this one is all about fitting the water gauge and setting the safety valve. When I first bought this boiler it didn't have a Stuart water gauge fitted but luckily in my parts box I had one. So the first part of this video is showing how I fit the water gauge and even though it looks like a simple job it's not as simple as you think. As you see the water gauge at the moment the fittings are just loosely screwed into the back head. Time to remove them I think. You will notice a similarity between the water gauge fittings and the clack fittings, and that's a good thing. They're really the same casting. The only difference is the water gauge fittings don't have a ball valve in there. After wiping away some PTFE tape residue with my finger, I remove the top fitting. The previous water gauge was fitted into the boiler bushes using PTFE tape, but I don't use that. The first part that I need to add to the water gauge is the piece of glass tubing. Here I'm checking that the glass tube is the right size for the fitting. I don't use PTFE tape, I use Loctite 542, and here's the 542 being applied to the threads. To make sure that the bottom fitting was in the correct position when tightened, I needed to use a washer, and I didn't have a copper one. Luckily though, I had a brand new aluminium washer. And I said in the last episode, I don't like aluminium washers, but I didn't have a choice because it was a Sunday afternoon, and Blackgate's Engineering, where I would normally get my washers from, don't open on Sundays. The cathodic corrosion of the aluminium washer is a very slow process, and seeing as now it's covered in Loctite 542, I really don't think this is going to be a problem. The next thing to do, and one of the most important things to do, is to check the alignment of the fittings with the glass in place. You have to be very careful when you do this, otherwise you will smash the glass. I'm holding the other end of the glass with my left hand, and moving it about. And the idea of this is to make sure that it's perfectly centralized in the lower fitting. Don't forget that when the boiler's in steam, the metal is going to expand. So as the bottom fitting expands, if it's not perfectly aligned with the glass, it will fracture the glass. So if you're fitting a water gauge, as always, take your time with it, and don't forget that the bottom water gauge fitting and the top water gauge fitting are small working models within themselves and therefore should be treated as such. And don't forget to check the position of the top fitting, because that is also in this case out of line. The top fitting doesn't need a washer. Now this could be a problem because the bottom fitting with a washer is slightly further out than the top, but it's such an infinitesimal amount it really doesn't matter. I've applied some Loctite 542 to the threads, which will seal them perfectly. I use my Barco spanner to tighten the top fitting followed by checking that the glass is still aligned perfectly. It's not really touching the sides of either the top or the bottom fitting. I noticed that the bottom fitting was not 100% aligned with the top one, so once again, with the back of spanner, a quick tweak, a very tiny amount, and now the glass fits perfectly. The next thing to do is to cut the glass to size. A while back, I bought a special glass cutting tool designed to cut water gauge glasses, and it worked very well, I did a video about it, then I promptly lost it. So, I'm back to the old method. First of all, I score the glass with a needle file, and then I use, once again, dare I say it, my Barco spanner to grip the glass and just snap it off clean. A quick health and safety advisory when doing this job, wear eye protection and don't cut your fingers. The water gauge is not going to offer a good seal, just rattling about down the middle of the fittings. So, I'm using an O-ring. I found this O-ring in a box with the water gauges, but I'm not too thrilled with the way it's looking. It's very difficult to fit. It only just fits inside the nut, and it's a little bit small. I don't think this O-ring originally came from a Stuart water gauge, but if it works, that's okay. If it doesn't work, I'll use an alternative method. The sequences push the glass tube through the top fitting and immediately press on an O-ring. Then put the top nut in place, push the glass a bit further down, put the bottom nut in place, and then fit the second o-ring. Then push the glass down all the way into the bottom fitting and tighten the nuts, but don't over tighten the nuts, if you do that, you will still break the glass. I don't think this is going to seal with these small o-rings, because the nuts are bottoming out on the thread, so I don't think this is going to seal, but I'll find out in a minute when I put some compressed air into the boiler. I now need to fit the top cap, which I'm doing, complete with its copper washer and a bit of Loctite 542, followed by fitting the blowdown valve. And apart from being coated in Loctite 542, 
This blowdown valve also has a copper washer on it. It's a 3 16 thread and it's a 3 16 copper washer. And all I need to do now is move the valve into the correct position. Don't apply too much pressure to the drain cock because you will distort it and then it will leak. A good way of doing it is to use the nut at the bottom, tighten it fully and then continue rotating the nut which will tighten the valve in place. And that's the water gauge blowdown valve fitted. And now it's time to fit a steam union into the steam dome at the top of the boiler. I'm going to put some compressed air into this in a moment. The main function of this steam union will be to allow steam out of the boiler via a pipe into the steam engine. This is my airline adapter fitted to the other end of the pipe. And now I can pump up the boiler and check the pressure that the safety valve blows off at. What is immediately apparent is the sound of an air leak and this is tracked down immediately to the water gauge. I wasn't very optimistic about the O-rings working anyway, so I'll remove them and do it in a different way. So once I finally get the gauge glass out of the fitting, I'm going to use a different method to refit the glass. Using my craft knife, I cut two rings of silicone from a piece of silicone rubber fuel tubing. I fit these on the glass as shown previously, followed by the nuts, and they're much easier to fit. Those O-rings were a little bit too wide, and I don't think they're sealed properly for that reason. I'm a little bit concerned about the safety valve, because when I pumped up the boiler, the pressure went too high and the safety valve didn't blow off, so I wondered whether the ball was rusty, like on the clack. But no it isn't, the ball is quite shiny, it's stainless steel, so I'll put it back in place along with the spring. I'm not a big fan of Stuart Model's safety valves. They've been historically like this for many years, but I don't like it because they don't look very good. They're quite ugly. This one's had a pair of pliers on it. You can see the marks on the top. It had also had a pair of pliers on the bottom part of the nut, but I cleaned that off on the one-inch belt sander. In this clip, I'm pumping up the pressure again, but I'm rotating the safety valve to slacken off the pressure that the top part applies on the spring. But no, it still doesn't want to blow off. By the way, the hissing noise you can hear is not from the water gauge this time, it's from the clack. I'll sort that out in a minute. I temporarily changed the safety valve for a later model. This one is different, it has a grub screw which allows you to lock the top collar in place. The only way of adjusting the previous type is to shorten the spring. And this one blows off okay, although it's making a very, very strange sound. They do this, I don't know why they do this, but... Uh, as I said, I'm not very thrilled with Stuart Model safety valves. I may fit a different type. I'll just give the clack valves some attention. There's quite a lot of dried out lime scale in this boiler, and obviously a piece of lime scale has got under the ball, that's why it's blowing slightly. So by using the Allen key to lift the ball and then let it slam back down onto the seat, it seals again. But I really can't do with this. This would drive me mad if every time I steamed it, it made a noise like this, but there is a solution. Uh, no, it's not a hammer. Just remove the safety valve and fit a different type. I strongly recommend Jubilee fitting safety valves. These are pop safety valves and I generally buy them from Black Hits Engineering. So the next thing to look at is the burner, followed by a steam test. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.